Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 11, and we're going to continue our series that we call Teach Us to Pray. Teach Us to Pray. Um, before we get into it, I want to thank every single person. My birthday was a couple of weeks ago. Thank you so much for birthday gifts and cards and money. Thank you. Uh, I'm so blessed and appreciative. Uh, I gave that money to my wife and told her, go shopping for me, babe. And so she went and bought me a bunch of nice new stuff. So I, I, I'm excited and I'm going to wear it with joy. So thank you. That, your gifts just really energize me and, and, and make me, you know, just want to preach more, pray more, love on you more, and be a blessing to you more. I know a lot of pastors sometimes, they say that people don't, love, don't take care of them, but you take care of me. And I want to say, thank you so much. I am loved and I feel the love. Thank you. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. Somebody say certain place. Jesus had a place where he went to pray. When he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. Jesus went to a secret place, a private place, a certain place, a place of solitude to communicate and commune with the Father. And the disciples noticed that Jesus was efficient and effective in his life, that he dealt with situations very swiftly and quickly, and they realized that it was his prayer life that got the results. And notice they didn't say, teach us to preach or teach us uh, to, you know, lay hands on the sick, uh, teach us to make money. Uh, they said, teach us to pray because we know what happens in your prayer life is the source of what's happening in your daily life. So they wanted to learn how to pray. And over the last several weeks, we've been talking about this, teach us to pray. It, it shows me that, um, you know, you're not always born with the knowledge of how to pray or even the, um, the wherewithal. What I mean by that, the, the, the desire to pray. I mean, you have to be taught if everyone had a desire to pray, then everybody would be praying. But everybody's not praying. People are, are uh, ignoring this powerful um, communion with God where prayer is concerned. Now, I'm not saying that you can't say a heartfelt prayer without, you have to be taught to say a, a heartfelt prayer. No, I'm saying is if you want to be a prayer, you're going to have to be taught to be someone that prays, a person that prays consistently and constantly, a person that wants to commune with God. Now, we've said in this series that prayer is not just talking to God. Uh, it's talking and listening. Somebody say, and, and. Listening. listening. Prayer is talking and listening to God. God knows more than you, so why are you doing all the talking? You should be doing the listening and letting God talk because prayer is God downloading what he wants you to know to you. When you get still and get quiet and go to your secret place, go to your place of solitude, God wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give you his kingdom. He wants to give you the knowledge of his kingdom. He wants to give you purpose. He wants to give you the ability to know what to do when you don't know what to do. And that is the purpose of prayer. We have turned prayer into something like a, ma you know, a magician. Now, let me ask all my requests and I'm just a hoping and a praying that God would you know, give me what I want. No, prayer is finding out what does God want. And when you find out what does God want, and, you, and you're serious about doing what he wants, because it's communion and it's fellowship and it's relationship, man, you can then bring your requests unto him as well. And when you bring your requests unto him, you and him talk and commune about it, praise God, and you'll see that prayer is efficient and effective and prayer works when you really have the right motive behind prayer. Last week we talked about that if you've got some unforgiveness in your heart, then your prayers will be hindered. Uh, anytime you want to go before God and you got a problem with somebody else, God is going to continue to bring up that problem that you have with someone else in prayer. Every time. Oh, Lord, I want to thank you and I want to talk to you about what's going on. He's going to say, what about Judy? <laughs> well, uh, well, what about Judy? Judy? Judy did me wrong. I ain't got time for Judy. And Judy did. Well, um, listen, I want to talk about Judy. I want to talk about you and Judy. Well, I don't want to talk about Judy. I want to talk about Judy. Oh, Lord, help me with, with my finances. What about Judy? This is what happens in prayer. Until you deal with Judy. And we can go back and listen to them. All these messages online, we talked about how to deal with Judy and how to reconcile and, and restore, if possible, maybe a relationship. 
But you're going to have to forgive if you're going to have an effective prayer life. You're going to have to have a heart that is free from unforgiveness. And forgiveness or unforgiveness, I should say, or let me say it this way. Forgiveness is a choice. You don't always feel like forgiving. Matter of fact, I have never felt like forgiving. Not one time has I ever felt like forgiving. It's a choice. I forgive because I've made a quality decision to forgive, and my feelings will change later, but right now I forgive. Uh, the best example I have of that, if, if, if I were to punch you in the face and say, I, I am so sorry, you can say, Pastor, I forgive you, but your face still hurts. The feelings will subside over time. But you made a quality decision to forgive. And that's what forgiveness is all about, making a quality decision. And if you want to have a, a prayer life that is unhindered, you're going to have to be free from unforgiveness. And so prayer is so vitally important. Uh, prayer is so uh, necessary for this Christian life. Prayer is, um, is our source of supply. It's our communion with our Heavenly Father. But I want to talk today about uh, a weapon that we have in prayer that I don't think many of us utilize. And let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. I believe. Ephesians chapter 6. And let's take a look at verse 10. We're going to see here in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Ephesians. And he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of him. His might, not your own might, his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the strategies of the devil. Now, the, the devil is, is, is like a thief. He's not like a robber. He's like a thief. He's going to come to you stealth. He's going to come to you subtly. He's going to come to you and try to steal, kill, and destroy from you without you even knowing. A robber is someone that's going to say, put your hands up and give it to me. The devil don't come to you like that. He come to you and takes stuff from you that you don't even know. So you, we got to understand the wiles of the strategies of the devil. Verse 12, it says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Your problem at work is not your boss. Your problem at work is not your next, or, you know, it's not your coworker. Your problem at home is not the, the, the next door neighbor. It, it's the, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Understand this. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're, we're, we're warring against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole, not just a piece, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil of the day. And having done all to stand, what are you supposed to do? Stand, therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. What's the sword of the spirit? The word of God. This is how you're going to fight him, with the word of God, not with your emotions, with the sword of the spirit, the word of the tears are not fighting him. It's the word of God. Now watch this in verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication, which is a request in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. In verse 18, he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Somebody say in the spirit. In the spirit. Part of our weaponry is the ability to pray all types of prayers in the spirit. Part of our weaponry is the ability to pray all types of prayers. You know, there's different types of prayers. The ability to pray all types of prayers in the spirit. Now, when you hear praying in the spirit, I want you to also hear praying in the Holy Ghost or praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is a weapon. Praying in the spirit is a weapon. Praying in the Holy Ghost is a weapon that we have in our arsenal against the wiles and the strategies of the enemy. Have you ever not known how to pray? You know, something comes up, someone maybe comes to you with something, you don't know where to start, 
You don't know how to pray about that. I, as a pastor, that happens to me all the time. I get a unique situation. I don't even know where to begin to pray. Or maybe it's in my own life. I don't know how to pray about that. Go to Romans chapter 8 real quick. I believe. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. The Apostle Paul says here, Likewise, the Spirit helps. The Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Here's our weakness. We don't know all, we don't always know how to pray. Here's our weakness. We don't know, we don't always know how to pray. This is our weakness. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession with us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So part of our weakness is we don't always know how to pray as we ought. We are very limited in our knowledge on some things. We don't always know the root issue of things. We don't always know what to pray for. I I'm amazed by someone that does not necessarily pray in the spirit and then they pray and it's so lim they're, they're, they're so limited in their understanding of even what to pray, that you're like, you way off because you, 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 don't, you don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're just keeping it in, in your understanding. But part of our weaponry is this tool that we have called praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, or praying in tongues. In Acts chapter 2, verse 4, it says, And they begin to speak. As the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Watch this. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They begin to speak. Now, uh, to speak simply means just to use Sounds and syllables. Sounds and syllables. Speaking is using sounds and syllables, but they spoke with other tongues. That word tongues just simply means language. Language. They begin to speak. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They begin to make sounds and syllables in another language as the Spirit gave them utterance. That word utterance means he gave them the uh, the unction. He gave them the articulation. Uh, let me give you an example of, you know, when, uh, let's take Zai, when she was little, and if she said, dad, dad, at, you know, six, seven, eight months old, dad, dad, was, it, to her, was just simply some syllables that she had heard. But she actually had utterance behind dad, because dad was a word. What if she said padre? Padre. Well, padre is a word in another language. But in her understanding, only knew syllables and sounds. And as you begin to pray in other tongues, what they did in the book of Acts is they begin to just speak sounds and syllables. And the spirit gave them utterance. And the miracle was everyone else understood what they were saying in their unique language. You know that there are, I should have did some study on this, but there are thousands of languages out there. A lot of them are unknown languages. And then there's heavenly languages. There's languages out there that, that, that have no, you can't write, but people speak, and there are dialects out there that are not written, but people speak these languages. And then I said, heaven has a language. And when the Spirit of God came down to dwell on the inside of us, he also brought a language with him. Oh, are you listening to me? See, see, we are unique as humans because we are in the earth, but we are also not from here. Oh, I'm going deeper today. The Holy Ghost is in us, and I'm not from here. I'm from above. I, I'm not from here. I'm from another place. The Spirit of God has just got me here on assignment. I'm just an ambassador here, 
But the Spirit of God is in me, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm uniquely positioned because I got the Spirit of God from heaven on the inside of me, but I dwell right here in this earth. So I am not limited in my understanding. Oh, glory be to God. Now, in your own flesh, you're limited in your understanding. But when you tap into the Spirit of God on the inside of you and you become God-conscious-minded, you understand that God lives there and there is no limit to what can happen in my life and in your life, praise God, when you understand that God lives on the inside of you. And because he lives on the inside of you, and because he dwells there on the inside of you, he has a special language. We don't know everything. That's our weakness. We don't know everything, but the Spirit of God does. He knows everything about everything. He knows everything about everything. Pastor, why do you keep repeating? Because I want you to get this. I want you to know that I don't know what to do here. I don't know what to say here. I don't, but the Spirit of God knows. I don't know what to pray. I don't know how to pray about that situation. I, I, I really don't know where to start. I need to tap into the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost knows how to pray. The Holy Ghost knows how to talk about this. The Holy Ghost has a perfect language on the inside. In 1 Corinthians 14, 39, it says, do not forbid them to speak with tongues. In today's society, in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the culture that we live in today, speaking in tongues is probably the most, uh, <laughs> the most attacked thing that I believe in Scripture. Uh, some people are okay with me having a little money in my pocket. You know, they, they're okay with me having a little help. When I talk about speaking in tongues, the Holy Ghost, oh, no, 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 that's, that is strange and that's from the devil. Well, I used to go to the club, y'all. I, I used to get it in when I was young and to the club, and I ain't never heard nobody speak in tongues in the club. <laughs> if it's so much of the devil, how come it wasn't happening in the club? All type of evil things was happening in the club. Now, my young people in here do not go to the club because there's nothing worthwhile in the club. Let me tell you that right now. I wasted a lot of time there. But... Oh, it's so evil, and speaking in tongues is so bad. I ain't never seen de the devil's people do it. Never. I ain't never seen them come and just, I got a word from the Lord. I ain't never seen that. <laughs> never seen it, never experienced it. No young lady walked up to me and did that at all. <laughs> in the club. But this is, this is devilish, and it's wicked, and, and tongues have done away with. And I can show you in Scripture that tongues has not been done away with. Tongues is still around today. If the, is the Holy Ghost still here? Yeah. Then his language is still here as well today. And we have to understand that praying in tongues, uh, there are three major benefits of praying in tongues. I want to encourage you to pray more in tongues than you ever have before. Even if it's just five minutes more than what you normally do. Or if you hadn't done it in a while, just get, get it in. Praise God. Five minutes. I mean, praying in the Holy Ghost, you are, the first benefit it gives you is it edifies you. It builds you up. And look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Look at verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. He says, pursue love. And desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Watch, look at verse 2. For he who speaks in a tongue, that means language, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. If I speak in a tongue, I'm not talking to men, I'm talking to God. If I'm speaking in a tongue, I'm not talking to men, I'm talking to God. God has given us a divine means by which we could speak to him supernaturally. It's called tongues. Supernatural divine means I can speak directly to him, bypass my limited understanding and speak directly to God. Some, there are some things that people could have never known on their own without the ability to have the, the, the tongues in operation and, 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 and in prayer in your life. There are some things that you only get through speaking in tongues. There's some understanding that you'll only get through speaking in tongues. For watch this, verse 2, he says, For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks 
mysteries. It says here, so when you speak in tongues, you can be sure that you're talking to God. You're not talking to men. You are talking to God. You can be sure of that, that I'm talking to God when I speak in a, in a tongue, that there are divine secrets that are being revealed. And look, the great part about this is when I'm speaking in a tongue, when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, when I'm praying in the Spirit, the devil doesn't even know what I'm saying. Glory be to God. He can't foul it up. He doesn't even know what I'm saying because I'm speaking in the Holy Ghost. I'm praying in tongues. I got a direct connection from my spirit and the Holy Spirit with the Spirit of God, and he doesn't even know. So not only do I not necessarily know what I'm talking about in tongues, most importantly, he doesn't know. And what he doesn't know, he can't, he can't stop. He said, because it said, had he had known that Jesus was going to be crucified, raised from the dead, and alive and well today, he would have never crucified him. So he don't know everything. And so speaking in the Holy Ghost gives me the ability to pray without him even knowing what is going on. Look at verse 3. It says, but he who prophesies speaks with edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. But verse 4, but he who speaks in the tongue edifies himself. He who speaks in the tongue edifies himself, builds himself up, charges himself like a battery, reju re rejuvenates himself, refreshes himself, builds himself up, edifies himself. Your spirit man is being edified by the Holy Ghost. If you're weak, then speaking in tongues can actually make you stronger. If you're down, speaking in tongues can actually stir you up. Oh, hallelujah. And when you're praying in tongues, if you go long enough, you'll get to this place where you'll just start laughing, praise God. The joy of the Lord will be your strength, and that's how you know you've broken through. I'm better because I spent some time praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now listen, you, when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you're, you're speaking to God. I don't need you to go to work and be sitting in your cube and kila my son, da da la ba ba ba. I don't need, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Just you and God. Get into your car and pray to cut that worldly music off. And pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost in the shower. Get in the shower. If you're going you're gonna to spend some, you better be taking showers. You got time to be spending in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the shower. Holly. Don't, don't try to get your singing career going in the shower. Just pray in the Holy Ghost in the shower. You got time. I know if you, you go to the bathroom, you pray in the Holy Ghost. I don't have time to pray in the Holy Ghost. I just gave you three times. That you have to pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pray in tongues. Edify yourself. Build yourself up. Get your spirit man strong. Pray the perfect prayer of God in the heavenly language. Glory be to God. And, and I like what Paul said in verse 5. He says, I wish you all spoke with tongues. Because some people are forbidding to speak in tongues. Well, I need to say this. Well, I don't have that gift. I need to talk about this because I think we as ministers have miscommunicated by using the word tongues as a gift. There is a such thing as called the gift of tongues. That's true. You may not have the gift of tongues because that always has interpretation that comes with it. But everyone has the ability to pray in tongues. So for us to say, well, you know, the gift of tongues, gift of tongues we're, you're, that's something separate. That's entirely separate, the gift of tongues. And if someone says, I don't have the gift of tongues, they may not have the gift of tongues because that's as the Spirit wills. But praying in tongues is different than the gift of tongues. Praying in tongues is part of your weaponry and your arsenal. And so everyone has the ability to pray. Every believer has the ability to pray in the Holy Ghost, and don't get caught up, I don't have that gift or not. You may not, but you do have the ability to pray in tongues. You may not have the gift of praying and someone giving an interpretation or you having an interpretation of that tongue. That may not always happen. That's called the gift of tongues. But there is a separate arsenal and weaponry called praying in the Holy Ghost that every believer has the ability to do. And Paul says, I wish you all spoke with them because some people are forbidding to speak in tongues. So the first benefit of praying in the Holy Ghost is it charges you up. If your spiritual battery runs down, this verse tells us how to charge it. Praying in tongues will edify us. It would build us up. It would make us stronger. Number two of praying in the Holy Ghost, the benefit is it allows you to pray when you don't know how to pray. 
When you don't know what to say, praying in the Holy Ghost will show you what to say. Look at verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 10, it says, there, it, there are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world. Listen to that. So many kinds of languages in the world. And none of them is without significance or importance. Tongues is just a language. Tongues, somebody said it. Say tongues, tongues. is a language. It's just a language. It's a language you don't understand, but it's a language in and of itself. It's a language. We were praying in the Holy Ghost in here uh, on, on Tuesdays. We had our church open for pastors to come pray, and we were praying, and, and one pastor was laid out right here on the floor. He was laid out right here on the floor just praying in the Holy Ghost, and another pastor said, I heard some words that you said because I used to live in Swahili, and you were speaking in Swahili, and you were saying words like fire and Holy Ghost and power. See, he didn't know what he was saying, but he was speaking a language that she was familiar with. Ooh, glory be to God. It's a language that's taking place, and you're speaking this language, and it's a heavenly language, and we may not all know what you're saying, but God does. God knows what you're saying. And watch this. There's so many languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. Look at verse 11. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I shall be a foreigner to him who speaks, and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. He said, don't talk to each other in tongues. That's what he's saying. Ain't no need to talk to each other. Pray. You can talk to God, but not to each other. We're foreigners. I don't know what you're saying. Come on, somebody, let's pray. To, let's say the grace over the food. I've been places like, who want to say the grace? Oh, I'll say the grace. No, just go ahead and say the grace in English, praise God. I don't know what you're saying. Verse 12. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. But look at verse 13. Therefore let him, him who speaks in the tongue pray that he may interpret. That word interpret means to unfold the meaning of what's being said. You know, you have the ability to pray that whatever you're saying can be interpreted. Uh, when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I'll pray in tongues, and then I'll pause and say, I believe I receive whatever it is that I just pray. I believe I receive an interpretation. I may not always get the interpretation because I'm trusting the Holy Ghost to do the praying for me. My spirit man's praying. I've got to utter up syllables and sounds. And let me just put that out there. Every time I've been praying in tongues for, uh, you know, how old am I? Gosh, I'm older than I just thought. I feel like I'm 27, but I've been praying in tongues. I'm 41. I've been praying in tongues for uh, 25 years, you know, and every time I pray in tongues, and I begin to do it every single time. The devil tells me, you're wasting time. You're just run, running off at the mouth. It, and, it, and when I first get going, it feels phony. It just feels that way. But how many of you know we're not moved by our feelings? We're not moved. Sometimes I feel like my wife don't love me. Is that true? No. Sometimes I don't feel like I love my wife. Is that true? No. Because I'm not moved by what I feel. Moved by what I Believe. I'm believed by what the word of God says. And every time, I mean, there are times I get ready to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'll come up here in the church by myself and pray in the Holy Ghost. When I get started, my mind says, you could be vacuuming the floor and you could be cleaning the chairs and, and you could be writing letters and you could be reading the word. And it's like, no, 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 no. I want, I want pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many people have, have had the devil talking like that? Yeah. All this other stuff you could be doing. Pray. No, no. It's time to pray in the Holy Ghost because the devil knows. If I can stop them, because I don't know what they're saying, if I can shut them up and they can stop talking to the Father directly, I can get in there and intervene. But pray that you may interpret. You know, uh, you don't know always what is happening, but you're going to pray that I interpret. I, Lord, I just, I, I pray for interpretation of what I'm saying. Reveal to me. Give me wisdom of what we prayed about. Give me understanding of what we prayed about. There have been times the, the Lord has woke me up and said, get out the bed and go pray. And I'll go to my office. And I'll turn some worship music on. And I'll usually start off in English. And then I'll get over in the tongues. I have no idea what I'm praying about. He just woke me up and said, go pray. I don't know what we're praying about. Lord, give me interpretation. There are times he has and there's times he hasn't. But give me interpretation. What, 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 what's going on? And then there are times that, you know, as you're praying, you might get a, a, a picture or something. And I, I encourage you, if you can, you know, have a notepad, you know, and, and you know, and, and write down. Because I believe when you're praying, I believe the Lord's reminding you of some things. There have been times I'm praying and he'll tell me, call, call your cousin. I ain't thought about them in a long time. 
You know, that's, that might be the Holy Ghost, you know? I need to give them a call, see what's going on. Call this person and encourage them. Call this pastor and encourage them because they're discouraged. And I, Well, let me say, I, I don't hear that directly. I might just hear that person's name, and I hear maybe, you know, let me think of a name, you know, Fred, and then, you know, and I'll hear encourage. Okay, let me contact Fred and encourage. I don't know. I'm just praying because, you know, your prayer is not always selfish. Oh, I knew I ain't gonna get a lot of amens on that because y'all won't, y'all, I, it, uh, us foe and no more. No, it's not always selfish. You, you, you're praying for other folks too. You're praying for other folks too. So as you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you're praying for other people as well. And as you're praying for them, God's going to talk to you about that. And as he does, you, you're going to know because you don't always know what to pray, but the Holy Ghost will tell you how to pray. But look at, I, like, I love this, look at verse 14. Uh, well, let me say it this way. I don't, I don't, before I get to verse 14, I don't always feel like praying in tongues. How many of you like that? You don't always feel like praying. How many, but I don't always feel like tithing. I don't always feel like saying good morning to my kids. I don't, I don't always feel like reading the Bible. So that don't mean anything, what you always feel like. You, 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 you do what you see what the Word says. Look at verse 14. For if I pray in the tongue, for if I pray in the tongue, if I pray in the tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. My spirit. Somebody say my spirit. My spirit. Oh, come on. Say it like you mean. Somebody say my spirit. My spirit. Praise. Praise. My spirit prays. Now, your Holy Ghost is going to help you, but it's actually your spirit. It's you, the real you is praying. The Holy Ghost will help you. He's going to give you the utterance. That's why you have to speak out first. And then he'll give you the utterance. See, many people are waiting for the Holy Ghost to just control their mouth and make their mouth start moving. And no, 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 it's the other way around. You got to speak and then he'll give the utterance. So in some situations, I'm not afraid to say this, some situations, you got to fake it until you make it. Are you listening? Like, I don't feel like it, but I, I mean, it gets going then. The Holy Ghost would jump in, but you got to get it started. It's like revving up that old car. You know, them old cars used to drive. Thank God I don't drive a car like that anymore. I just, I'll give it a little time, get a little time. Remember that? Oh, praise God. You got to, you got to rev it up and get that thing going. That's how it is sometimes praying in the Holy Ghost. You got to get started and then let the utterance jump in. Well, the, and the devil going to tell you you're faking. Say, well, devil, I did start out faking a little bit, but, but if the Holy Ghost is going to come in, at any moment he's going to come in. Am I preaching to somebody? I don't know who I'm talking to today. But at any moment the Holy Ghost is going to jump in and help me out. It says my spirit prays, but watch this, my understanding is unfruitful. The Bible's telling you you're not going to understand what's going on. Your understanding is, is not productive. And here's people that fight against praying in tongues. I'm talking about people that have a heart too, but they just, well, my, God's not asking us to be mindless. Uh, yes, he is. There are times that he wants you out of your mind. When he tells you to, to run around the church, that's mindless. Like, you know what? Uh, uh, <laughs> I remember the first time like, the Lord told me to run around the church. I, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm classy, you know? <laughs> You know, I was, I was I, you know, I was, I was single, you know, and it was a packed church and the spirit of God, the preacher was going. And he kept saying, there's a river. There's a river on the, uh, up here at this altar. There's a river. Now, I can't even swim. OK, so I wanted to stay away from the river. OK, but there's a river. There's a river and, and it's flowing. I'll never forget this. And it's flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing. This river. Jump in the river. Jump in. This is what he kept saying. Jump in the river. Jump in the river. I said, no, I'm not going to jump in the river like if there was a real river there, I, I would not even be standing close to the river. He's like, jump in the river, jump in the river. Next thing I know, the Spirit of God said, what, are you going to jump in the river? And I was like, I don't want to jump in the river. Uh, uh, oh, I'll jump in the river. I took off running around the church. took off, and I was running. I looked behind me. There were about nine people behind me. They were just waiting for somebody to take off running. And we were running, and I'm looking. I'm like, oh, my gosh, they're running fast. Woo. <laughs> We was running. We hit them, we hit them circling. Somehow we got up front and we fell on the ground and we all fell at each other and we started laughing and, I, and it, was, it was embarrassing. But I jumped in the river, praise God. I jumped in the river. Hallelujah. And I didn't understand. That, that seemed mindless and silly. And I asked the people that took off, I said, why did y'all run? They said, when you started running, we, we 
started running. Hallelujah. So my breakthrough was their breakthrough. When I obeyed God, that gave them the, the, uh, the reason to obey God as well. Jump in the river. Sometimes you just, you just, did I feel like anything natural happened? I was tired. I mean, we was running fast, but I believe, I still remember that story. I believe the Holy Ghost said, I can, I can trust you. I can trust you. Well, God wants to, he don't want us mindless. Um, there are times he wants us to, to, to get outside our realm of thinking. And to get into his realm of thinking. I don't pray in tongues because my mind is not involved. Do you have to be in control of everything? He says, get out your mind and pray in the spirit. In verse 15, it says, what is the conclusion? Watch this. What is the conclusion then? I will. Somebody say, I will. I will. That means it's an act of your will, your choice. I will pray with the spirit. So I'm not waiting on God to do it. I will pray in the spirit. And I will. Somebody say, I will. Also pray with the understanding. So we still pray in English or whatever your native language is. We're going to pray in our, with our understanding, but we're going to also cross over into the spirit. And then we're going to cross back over into with our understanding. And we're going to cross back over in the spirit. And we're going to cross back over in our understanding. We're going to do both. I will. It's an act of my choice. Not waiting on the Holy Ghost to do it. I will do this. And then it says, I will sing with the spirit. Somebody say, I will. Sing with the Spirit, and I will. Say it again, I will. I will. Also sing with understanding. What does that mean? I'm going to sing songs that I understand the words, and then I'm going to get over and sing in the Spirit. The number three reason to pray in the Holy Ghost is to increase your worship. To increase your worship as you sing in the Spirit. You're increasing your worship. You're increasing your ability to enlarge your capacity to bless God, to worship God to magnify him, to make his name big in your eyes. You're increasing your capacity to minister to him. I will sing in the spirit and I will sing with my understanding. And as you, as you go before God, you know, in our series, we talked about you, the start, right? You go with silence, reverence, awe, respect. And you get into Thanksgiving. When you get in that Thanksgiving and that tea and in the adoration, at times before you even enter your request, if you yield it to the Holy Ghost, you'll get over and praying in the Holy Ghost. Right? And that Thanksgiving and adoration, you'll start getting into the Holy Ghost at that point, praying in tongues and worshiping him in tongues. And Lord, I don't even know what to say in English anymore. I had to cross over into another language so I can communicate what I need to communicate from my spirit to you. And then when you get to this place, you're like, hallelujah, you may, you may laugh or you feel peace. Lord, I just come before you. Watch over my wife as she's traveling here. Watch over my kids. Or, or I think that today's the day, Lord. You know, today's the day I meet my wife. You know, or if you're single, whatever the case might be, you get over into that and you get over into it. Before you even get into your request, you already hit the Holy Ghost. You already prayed in tongues. That Thanksgiving and adoration will cross you over into speaking in a heavenly language. So number one, what is the number one reason we pray in the Holy Ghost? That edifies us, builds us up, builds up our spirit, man. What's the number two reason? Gives us the ability to pray when we don't know what to pray. We, we can pray when we don't know what to pray. And what's number three? Worship. It increases your worship. It increases your capacity to worship God. 